And welcome to Sports Day on 1590 KVGB and 95.5 FM, the talk of the town, coming to you from the Mayo Money Management Studio. I'm guest host Steve Webster, back in this week. Is he excited to be back or what? Welcome back, Daddy. (laughs) Good to see you, Mikey. Did you get the job? <laughs> he goes away, and the Royals need a new manager, and we thought there was all kinds of stuff going on, and and I was I was watching it while in uh, on the patio watching the squirrels go across. I spent an entire week on my patio with nothing to do except Wednesday, and we'll get into that here in just a little bit. That was a glorious day, now but we- you know, hey man, the boogeyman's out there. I just do not. The boogeyman is out there. It will get you. You won't feel like you have anything, but you'll have to stay at home from work. Don't get tested. The bags. <laughs> it's pretty simple. I had the World Series coming up for fantasy baseball. I wanted to get oh, tested. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. So, okay. Gotcha. The bags went from your eyes to Hesher's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> great a lot job. A lot of appreciation for the work you do, Webby, after that week. No, but a great appreciation because you're, you're a man with boots on the ground. You're not afraid to get dirty. Especially when you don't have any choice. <laughs> we got dirty. Yeah. Mike Corson, you just you just make us bad. The two guys that ah, just uh, this is just a love fest here. So let's get going yeah, here go today on, move on, on the program. We will start today. Oh, I'm going to give the lineup today. Voice of the Panthers, Patrick Burnett will be in four in a row. Going to look to make it five in a row. Great Ben Panthers winning their homecoming game. Great Ben Tribune's Jim Mazunas will be in with us again. Apparently, the officials couldn't see that there was a ball that was over the end zone costing the Panthers a take. Mizuna's always on the refs all the time. I had to get on him today. On the prowl feature, Chewy Loera will be in. Talk some Panther soccer, uh, Monday sports headlines, and, of course, our sounds of the weekend. We ready? Aaron Beck, his team improving to 4-2 and two on the season, talking about their second half. Defense shut out. The liberal Redskins, and he also gave him a little bit of kudos. Well, coach team, that's what happens. You get an eight man coach in there from Meade, and they're much improved. The Panthers, you knew it wasn't going to be a, a layover. I mean, the liberals been pretty good 28 14, solid win. Now you get Ulysses on Friday, and oh, how the tables have turned for the fortunes of Great Bend Panther football. Yeah, even uh, I, a little bit of a homer, but I kind of thought Great Bend would play close to Hayes, and I've I got let down in that one, but now you can confidently say Great Ben's going to be the favorite week in and week out. Especially start looking at scores right now. I mean, Dodge City gave Hayes a heck of a battle. I was surprised. A little bit of a homer? Oh, I like to be right more than I like to be a okay, homer. Okay, we're Central Kansas homers, boys. Okay, right okay. here. Panthers and Ulysses. We'll talk to it with uh, the Big P coming up in just a little bit. Glorious day in Man. I always wondered what college game day would look like in in Lawrence. And they've got a natural amphitheater. It was it was really really cool up there on the side of the hill, and everything was there. And and the only problem was TCU didn't cooperate. <clears throat> Max <laughs> Duggan with a score from three yards out. He's pretty good. And KU somehow still nearly won the game, 38-31. to 31. Yeah, you wonder if it would have been different with Daniels in there, but then the guy comes off the bench and throws some absolute dimes. You got the fumble on the one-yard line. You got a missed field goal. So it was picked at six and a half, and lo and behold, it was seven points. Which way did you go? I would have been all over the TCU one, and I would have won, but really, KU might have been the better team, just a couple mishaps. Lance Leipold, head coach of KU, after the loss, and he, he kind of said it. You know, he's proud of the guys, but it's a program that you can tell is maybe because they do dumb things, you know. I mean, you had an unsportsmanlike, you know, some special teams, those little things that, that come up and bite you. Even and just, hopefully they'll clean that up. Watching the Houston game, I thought, or there was the Duke game, I thought, man, these guys can't tackle, and evidently they missed a ton of tackles last week. And then right out of the gate this time, couldn't tackle. The number one, the receiver, absolutely torched him, I think 207 yards. He's pretty good, too. So, it, yeah, you shut down him once or twice, and it's probably a different ball game. KU to Norman. Is KU going to be favored in that game? They ought to be. I mean, they're ranked. Oklahoma got torched 49 to nothing. Can you believe Oklahoma had scored every game 311 straight back to 1998? I, I just, I'd say. But it depends on what their quarterback's doing, and 
uh, like they're talking on game day, who is the best team in the Big 12? So Herbie says Oklahoma State. So obviously it's Oklahoma State because Herbie said. But <laughs> I don't think you can count out Oklahoma at any point. So it is interesting that now you have the conversation who's the favorite. It might be a, almost a toss-up, especially if their quarterback's back. It's College football has been so surprising to me this year. The parody that we didn't think was going to be there. It's fun week in, week out. Because now, yeah, guys transfer. Well, I can get play here. I'll go to this place. Get out on the field. Uh, the call on ESPN2, Adrian Martinez. I think we forget how big Adrian Martinez is. They had him dead to rights with that blitz. He kind of did, did the wiggle shake and knocked him off and then finds Brooks who breaks a tackle and goes on in for a touchdown. That was the only touchdown that they would get. They win against an Iowa State team. Their defense is really good. And you guys wonder, well, okay, you really struggled the week before. They no one had stopped them. Well, TC or Iowa State's got a good defense. K State finding a way to win that game, and now they're five and one and atop the standings in the Big Twelve. Adrian Martinez uh, talking about the win, passing for two hundred forty six yards, rushing for seventy seven. K State gets the week off. KU needs the week off. Those boys are banged up right now. They, they had uh, K State favored at two and a half in that one, and I thought no way because Iowa State can't score. Lo and behold, almost the spread. But I wish they would make a decision. I didn't think Adrian Martinez was as tough as Colin Klein, but he took some licks. He gets back up. He's not a great passer. Run run the old option. K-State's got that in the playbook, you think? Well, I was worried about his toughness, but if he's going to take hits and get up, then yeah, through for he two. ran him several times. So K-State at TCU in a couple of weeks. Woo-hoo-hoo, doggy. Okay, tonight, Monday Night Football. Did that Raiders guy called up again, didn't he, on trading post today? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I thought you were talking about the Raiders. Well, we're, the, the Bengals guy called up, but he didn't identify himself as the Bengals guy, and I'm not v- well-versed enough in voices on trading post yet to know that that was the Bengals guy. Oh, well, you didn't give him a hard time. He's a good man. Well, I know well, he's a Bengals fan, but he's... <laughs> He didn't say anything. He was selling kittens. Or he's trying well, to give away kittens. Got beat last night on a field goal. That's what I was thinking. He's trying to give away kittens. Were they? You say bingle. I say Bengal kittens. Well, he wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trey. Anyway, move on. Steve Spagnuolo talking about he. The Raiders lost their first three games, then came back, beat Denver. This is a huge game. All of a sudden, you know, Casey's schedule so tough, and then they get one and three Raiders in, and then you get Buffalo next week. At Arrowhead. So that might be the biggest so, danger is that you're looking ahead because... I would hope They not. just did that. Yeah. They just had a trap game a couple of weeks Anyone ago. Anyone knows that in any day in the NFL. Exactly. That game's tonight. JV football game I was going to officiate tonight. I got moved up an hour. Because of the game. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because Southwestern Heights has a long way to go. Oh. So why wouldn't you... So you move the game up earlier so you could get out of school earlier? So you could get home earlier? Oh, I like to get out of school earlier. Well, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Five o'clock kick tonight. It's a lot of wildlife on the road this time of year. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> get in when you can. Yeah, yeah. Cole Rife ran over a rat. Yeah. Oh. It was stuck in the front of the grill one time. So, yeah, there's danger out there for the play-by-play guys. Steve Spagnolo, Chiefs defense. We'll see if they can get it done tonight. B1043, the point. You can listen to Chiefs. Starting at six tonight, uh, one MLB Wild Card Series went to distance, and that was wrapped up last night. The call here on KVGB: Austin Nola singling home two runs. I gave San Diego a two nothing lead on the Mets, and behind the pitching of Joe Musgrove, who had uh, olive oil somewhere on his body. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> they were checking, checking behind his. <laughs> yes, they Did were. he stick his finger in his ear? I don't didn't see that okay, part, yeah. but he was rubbing his face and his ears, and it was is ear wax illegal. <laughs> Well, if you can use it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a Q-tip getting a swab out there. Anyway, they move on. They beat the Mets last night 6 nothing. New York wins 100 games. Doesn't matter. They're gone. So it'll be the Philadelphia Phillies and the Braves going to the other National League uh, Division Series. San Diego gets the Dodgers. Dodgers rolled them this season. This dominated them. Now you get them back in the best of five series. Uh, American League, Yankees against Cleveland, Houston going against Seattle. All the division series are best of five. We'll have 
two American League games for you tomorrow here on KVGB, starting with the Seattle-Houston uh, series at 2 o'clock, followed by the Yankees. I'm glad they're starting out early because usually the Yankee games get over with. They're like five-hour games. <laughs> About 2 o'clock in the yeah, morning. 2 o'clock in the Gee. morning. We'll have all the action for you right here. And my game, my guy Brad Sham on the Cowboys radio network. Tony Pollard, 57 yards for a touchdown, giving the Cowboys 16-10 lead over the Rams in the second quarter. Dallas wins it 22-10, to and they were done, right? So you're going to put Dak back in when he comes, in, comes back? I got to say some K-State news here. So I went to May's Derby on Friday. Avery Johnson is the real deal. So they were down two or three scores early on. I thought Derby's going to run away with it. K-Staters should be excited, I think, about getting this kid. Great passer, great runner. Doesn't lose his cool. So Mays comes back three straight years. That game has been decided by one point. And you were there for catching Kansas. No, I was there for fun, and then I left with nine minutes to go, so I missed the game-winning field goal with a minute 22. That's there was a casino n- nearby, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, he peeled off those lines going into the show. He knows everything. Well, there's going to have a special betting segment coming up here on the program. Uh, isn't he transferring to KU now? He's going to jump on the magic bandwagon. I don't always see the headlines, so I can't tell if you're joking or not. <laughs> Not, I don't think so. Okay, sports news here. Uh, I want to go through some of the high school scores from Friday night. Hoysington, 44, Lakin, nothing. Lakin was 5-0, and although their schedule is a bit suspect. Good to see Zach Baird and the Cardinals bounce back. We'll have Zach Baird in here on the show on Thursday. And the big thing was that was district, so everybody thinks that was going to be basically the district title game. So it was not only a big win, but it was a big win. See what I did? <laughs> That was so Yogi Berra like. I was going to say. That was awesome. That was good, Mike. Larned 60, Southwestern Heights 6. Larned and Hoisington coming up on Friday. Tad Remy will be on the show on Wednesday to talk about it. Pratt beat Smoky Valley 47 30. Inman, number one in the state. Now, they had, I think, a 28 nothing lead on Ellen. Ellenwood's competing, man. A big step in the right direction. Uh, Ellsworth slugged it out against Russell. Winning at eighteen fifteen, I would argue Russell's had the toughest schedule in the state. Now they get Phillipsburg, which is kind of a laydown game for them, right? Phillipsburg's two and four. We talked about that one several times last week, and Beloit had been the only team to score on Ellsworth at six points. But Ellsworth's schedule is pretty weak, but you got a lot of big wins, so I thought it might be closer than the records indicated. 18-15. Central Plains gets their first win. They beat Otis Bison 60-14. to Maxville and Lacrosse. That shocked me. That was, our, that was our highlight game yes. here. Because we had the interviews with both coaches, or you guys did. I, yeah, they 50 to nothing. Maxville flexed some muscles on that one. South Barber fighting some injuries. Now they're 6-0, and but St. John took them to the wire 36-30. to Kudos to St. John and the Tigers. Stafford's undefeated. 36-32, so they get South Barber Friday night. Battle of 6-0 and teams. We'll have Mitch Ingleton, head coach of the Stafford Trojans, on the program tomorrow. Sylvan Lucas over Wilson, 46-0. Hodgman beats Satana, 58-18. Skyline gets her first win against Kiowa County, 70-6. Victoria gets taken to the wire by Wallace County, 30-28. Ooh, Kinsley shut out South Central, 42 to nothing. Trigo over Ness City, 56-6. Six-man games, Burton over Pawnee Heights, 82-60. Natoma over Chase, 55-6. We'll be talking about the schedule coming up uh, the rest of the week for high school football. Week 7, can you believe it? Uh, AP Top 25 out. Kansas State moved up. Yeah, they did. They moved from 20 to 17 this week. KU State at 19. Texas back in the poll, 22. Oklahoma State's number eight. Barton Volleyball, that's been a rough season for the Lady Cougars. They got off to a great start, won their first 11 matches, but they lost to Seward County in straight sets, a little bit shorthanded. Now just 3-7 and seven in conference, 14-7 and seven overall back in action Wednesday. Hosting Cloud County, Barton Soccer, Cougars Sports Complex, Barton Men beat Dodge City Saturday 2-1. Barton win- Women over Dodge City 2 to nothing. So... Headlines of the day, Carolina Panthers hired or fired their head coach today, Matt Rule. Maybe he can go to 
Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> or Wisconsin. Yeah, and one of those things. One of the two, yeah. so they keep climbing out of it. Yeah, just well, not climbing, but Leipold. That's what you get for putting a leash on Baker Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Go. Got it. Like, yeah, Matt Rule's gone as he's uh, five games in his third year, not having a lot of. I talked to a Broncos fan the other night. Yeah. Right, so what's what's the they point? were ready for them to fire uh, Nathaniel the other night after game one or two. It was like, are you kidding me? They're not on Russell. Russell went to get his shoulder checked out. Well, I know. No. They were ready for Hawthorne. Was it Hawthorne? What's his name? I'm losing it. Hackett. Hackett. They were ready for him to be gone. Nathaniel Hawthorne. Wasn't he a great author? Well, <laughs> that was Scarlet my parents. <laughs> was that who, who, That's what Russell has got a sieve. It's not scarlet, but it's orange. I was going to get one of those this weekend to just put on my chest. The you know, scarlet letter. It looks like the A in Alabama. Who... <laughs> All right, and before we go, Patrick Burnett is in with us. Now, Wednesday, right? So I'm sick. The Hustlers won. Yes, but it was a gl- it was Wednesday afternoon. I've got the TV on with, with MLB Network. I've got the MLB app. I've got two laptops. I've got seven games going on at the same time as the Hustlers against the Caney Cub Sox. And we were, we were hanging in there. This is the World Series. This is going to determine it. And then Trey Turner hits a three-run homer at about 5.15. And that's probably going to do it because I'm running out of guys. But then in the span of five minutes, this happened. Mike Trout crushes one. He's staring that one down. Wow, number 40. I'm up on my out of my chair now. Three-time MVP, Mike Trout. 4.52 distance for Trout. Wow. Then, North, that's line toward right center. That's a base hit. It bounces in. It goes to the wall. Viento scores. Naquin scores. Around third, Alvarez comes home. Relay to the plate. Cut off. Alvarez comes home. Francisco Lindor has a three-run double. Hustlers There's take the lead and then this. Deep to right. And this one is gone. Corbin Carroll is fourth of the year. And the Diamondbacks go back-to-back. And I'm running around the backyard, forgot that I had the big dog over there, stepped in poop. It didn't matter. <laughs> and despite a late save, the Hustlers win the World Series. It was, it was glorious, boys. I wish you would have been there. Real quick, what is the Cub Sox? What, what's the mascot? It's a bear with socks on. Gotcha. Okay. And we're working our butts off, and he's there watching baseball. I'm Listen, thinking, what I would, is wrong I'm with this picture? I'm just going along company policy. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't supposed to be here. <laughs> what am I going to do? Just slump around? Well, I'm just going to sit here and not do anything. No. <laughs> Sorry to the neighbors, and <laughs> but it was it was glorious. By the way, the Dighton Diggers didn't even make the playoffs. So. Well, well, congratulations. Anyway. All right, thank you. I know that that hurts you. To that say does. It, it kills but, me. But you know, we say pitching wins in the playoffs. Cleveland, 15 innings, one run. They're moving on. They Oops, get the, the Guardians. Yankees. Ah, baseball. Yeah, we might talk a little Braves coming up here too. Atlanta Braves here on Sports Day. Coming up, we'll have Patrick Burnett, Jim Mazunas, Mike Corson, Chewy Loera on the program here on your local sports station, <laughs> Sports Talk Radio. Yeah. KVGB. One of the great advantages about online classes is you, is you can take them anywhere. I would sit in my room, still in my robe from waking up, and I'd just try to focus on my classes. From Bar and I kind of took a range of classes from accounting, history, and I took PE1 and PE2 through Barton. They transferred pretty incredible. It helped save money and it helped save some time too. Just to think that you can live really anywhere and take these classes, I think it's pretty cool. When you need to get rid of the pain, you want the best. You need to see Dr. Dan Quillen at Catalyst Therapy and Sports Rehab. Dr. Dan is Barton County's only board-certified clinical specialist in orthopedic physical therapy. No matter your age, when it hurts, he will help. Call Dan at 620-282-4825. That's 282-4825. Excellence-driven, unrivaled results. Catalyst Therapy and Sports Rehab. Inside the Fieldhouse at 9th and Madison in Great Bend. This is the sound of a school bell ringing. But just four years ago, parents in Kansas were sounding a very different kind of bell, an alarm bell. Because when Sam Brownback made devastating cuts to our schools, it took a toll on kids in Kansas. Class sizes increased. Basic repairs got put off. 
There were even schools in Kansas that couldn't afford to open some days. It was a total disaster. But it wasn't just Brownback. Derek Schmidt supported Brownback's cuts to schools. Schmidt even went to court trying to keep the cuts in place, wasting your tax dollars to do it. But Governor Kelly cleaned up the mess that Brownback and Schmidt made. Working with both parties, she got the budget balanced and got education fully funded again. Laura Kelly brought our schools back from the brink. Call Governor Kelly at 785-296-3232. Tell her to commit to keep fully funding Kansas schools. Paid for by Kansas Values Institute. Time to talk Great Bend Panther sports with the voice of the Panthers, Patrick Burnett, right here on Sports Day. Welcome back, Sports Day. Patrick Burnett, voice of the Panthers, joining us. I didn't want to leave your Braves out. I mean, I did have Rizzo Iglesias uh, got me four holds to, to help the Hustlers. So One of the best acquisitions of the year, we trade Tucker Davidson and Jesse Chavez for him. Davidson flames out. They send him down to the minors. They release Chavez, and we get him right back. <laughs> and he's been good. Jesse Chavez can only he's pitch in an Atlanta, right? yeah, in an Atlanta uniform. So we we got rid of Sean Newcomb earlier this year for Jesse Chavez. We have got him back twice this year. Well, he's he's a valuable commodity, and you, it's the only thing is when Iglesias came from the Angels, I that killed me because I. Needed him for saves, yeah. but anyway, it all works out in the end. Patrick Burnett, the guy who said right before the season started, said, yeah, we'll probably might struggle a little bit, you know, first two games, but we're going to come back and we're going to go off on a winning streak. Solid. 28-14, Aaron Beck said it after the game, yeah, Liberal's better, the, the, the coaching's better, and you saw, you know, Liberal's been competitive with everybody. That was a solid win, man. Defense went to work in the second half. Yeah, they really did. Um, just an, another overall team win for the Panthers. And I mean, you, you look at the score and say 28-14. All right. They, that last score didn't come until, gosh, what, under two minutes to go um, in that ball game. Um, and the, the, for me, the, the big thing was when the defense came up with the stop in the first half. After both teams' offenses scored on their first two possessions, it came down to, okay, which defense is going to be able to to do something here? And it was the Panther defense that, that forced Liberal to a three and out. Oh, I beg your pardon. That was the Dodge game. They, uh, My mind's a little twisted right now. Uh, a, a fourth down play. And the Panthers ended up getting the ball, had a relatively short field. They were able to cash that in, and, and I feel that was the big momentum changer right there in that ball game that gave them that little bit of cushion uh, that they really needed. Usually you don't see teams with this kind of character when you're coming off a 18, 19-game losing streak, but it seems like they've had it. You know, They didn't lose confidence early. You know? No, absolutely, and I think that's just a testament to the kind of kids we have here in Great Bend. Uh most coaches will tell you when they play great, Ben, maybe sometimes it's it's not the most gifted team or it doesn't have this much. Great Bend kids always empty the tank. They give you everything they got. Now, sometimes there's not a lot to give, but they give it all. And, and, and I have seen it. Coach Beck has seen it. Coaches have seen it. These kids have been going to work every single day. They've been packing that lunch pail. They've been punching the time clock. And it's finally time that, Everybody else gets to see all the work um, that they have put in, and they're reaping those benefits, and I think it's great. Yeah, 28-14, they win it now, and then you look at a Ulysses team that's – it's kind of weird. I checked to see if Ulysses got out of the GWAC. I mean, they've had a whack schedule uh, this season. Not only a whack schedule, but they had a game with Chanute um, in there as well. They have really struggled a lot, um, quite honestly, ever since the death of Jason Kenny. Yeah. Um, he was Ulysses football, and, and they have really struggled. You know, um, they had Nick Fawcett. He lasted one year last year. Kate Albert, um, this is his first year there. So, you, you know, they are really struggling right now in Ulysses, and, and that was a program that was competitive as, as heck, and they would play 5A and 6A teams in Dodge and Garden and Liberal and Great Bend. Um, right now, they are really kind of licking their wounds a little bit. So this is really great for the Panthers. Um, 
you know, at the very least, I think Great Bend now ends up with a five and three record. They've got a shot at six and two. And when you look at playoffs, there's a whole slew of things that could happen. Um, Panthers could finish as high as the four seed. They could finish as low as the ten seed. Um, you'd kind of like to avoid that that eight, nine, ten area. Um, because if you line, line up in that area, that lines you up against number one seeded Mays in the second round. We don't um, want to see them, though. No. no, that'd be that'd be okay. But um, but either way, um, I I think the Panthers definitely in the driver's seat now to host a home playoff game, which I think would be really really great. Um, the uh, you know yeah, Ulysses coming in. That's one where you, you don't focus so much about the opponent; you focus more about yourself. Go to work, get the things done. Yeah, um, Panthers step back right now. No, absolutely not. Now, lost a very big key factor to this defense in Deion Jones. Um, you know, probably uh, after this game, he's now the number two leading tackler. Um, I have not talked to any of the staff, but I mean, I know he broke his arm, so he's probably done for this season. Uh, Dion was the best defensive lineman the Panthers had this year, uh, kind of the heart and soul, um, the engine that made that defense go. So, from the great Ben from here on out, you know when you're going against Garden, and then you get into the playoffs, they're they're going to have to change some schemes around. They're going to have to um, rely on some different kids. There's going to be some changes on that side of the ball. I'm glad this week is the week they actually get a chance to to put some kids in, to move some guys around, do some stuff. Use this week to get yourself ready for Garden in the playoffs. Okay, Patrick Burnett, voice of the Great Bend Panthers, with us here today. Patrick, I don't know if you guys talked about it last week or what, but you're in your last week here at Eagle Radio. You're going to stay on doing the games during the rest of the week, but wow. Yeah, it's very bittersweet. Um, You know, when you you put all my – uh, years of service together. I'm coming up on 20 years with this company. Um, this second tour of duty, as I call it, you know, uh, I'll be I'll be closing out my 14th football season. Um, I have I had already completed my 14th basketball seasons. Um, so yeah, it's very bittersweet. Um, leaving though for a wonderful organization that I'm very passionate for. Um, uh, obviously, the people that you meet, um, the, the things that happen, those are all things that you will always stay with. And, and, um, you know, no bitter feelings on, on my end. I hope there isn't any from the company side, but it's, it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful stretch. Um, you know, one of the hardest things I had to do was, 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 was give Matt my resignation letter here and then immediately go from here and go to Matt Westerhouse, you know, Brand new athletic director at Great Bend High School, and and break him the news as well. Um, so you know my time as the voice of the Panthers is is very limited. When this football season is over, I will be done, and it's very uh, very reminiscent to to stand back and to look and see of of all the coaches, all the staff, all the administrators that I've worked with, and and at the end of the day, um, you taught me something that that always stayed with me. When you're doing a high school game, every night something's going to happen in that game that's going to be the biggest night of a kid's life. Yep. And that was something that really stuck with me during some of these lean years that Great Ben has had. And, and, and as a broadcaster, it's our job to tell the story. Sometimes the story is beautiful. Sometimes the story is pretty ugly. But it's our job to tell that story. And there are real-life kids that are living that story. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And so I always tried to remember that. And, and I think you've been in those moments where you've had a dad or a grandma or somebody come up to you and they tell you about what you said about their kid or their grandkid. And, um, you know, they, the the tears are streaming down their face and, and that's when you realize this is why we do what we do. Um, it's, it's not for the money, it's not for the fame. It's not. It's for the kids. And so that's what I'm going to miss the most is, is you know, uh, being with the community. And, 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 again, you've done this long enough. When you get accepted into a family, you don't have to be accepted. And it almost feels like you earned that. And, you know, walking away from a family is tough. But 
hey, the Panthers are, are on the upswing. Uh, this year's basketball teams, I think, are going to be competitive. We're starting to see the football program come around. So Panther Nation is going to have a lot of really good times coming up. I just will not tell the story anymore. But I'll be in the I'll be in the stands, um, you know, because I, I I want to see these teams. I want to see these kids um, excel, and, and I want to see where they go. And I think there's some really really good times for the Panthers. Coming okay, up. but uh, are you going to be able to be, join us on Mondays? Yeah, I, I I may not be able to physically be here. We'll, we'll take a but phoner. I can de- definitely be available of a phoner. But other times, yeah, I, I got to find a new friend of the show on Friday. But you're in here Friday, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, Roger. I got okay. you. Patrick, thanks. Appreciate it. Your broadcast coming up on a Friday night. Panthers and Ulysses down at Mew at uh, Memorial State Municipal Auditorium. Memorial Stadium. It begins here. with an M, Steve. Yeah, it's all good, brother. That M place down and there. And it's on a Morton Street, too. <laughs> Great bend. And Ulysses. Jim Mazunas, Great Bend Tribune. Join us next on Sports Day. Venture Corporation is now hiring for a CDL tanker operator driver. We'll operate the same truck all week. New higher wages with flexible hours. No weekends. And time and a half over 40 hours. Blue Cross and Blue Shield Health Insurance. Vision Insurance. Section 125 Cafeteria Plan. 401k Retirement Plan with match. Venture Corporation is an equal opportunity employer. Women and minorities encouraged. Apply in person at 214 South Highway 281 in Great Bend. Online at VentureCorpKS.com. Or call. Paul Leslie at Venture Corporation. Homegrown, family owned. Hey everyone, this is Cole Ryan, voice of the Barton Cougars. Attending sporting events for Barton Community College is great, but did you know you can support the athletic teams even further by getting involved with the Cougar Booster Club? The boosters help with fundraising for equipment and facility upgrades to give Barton athletes every opportunity to keep succeeding at the regional and national levels. Join the Cougar Booster Club as an individual or business. Call 620-792-9377. Become a booster today. Go Cougars. Superior SX is growing, expanding, thriving, and you have a chance to change the future while changing your future by joining our team. Work in a safe, clean, and climate-controlled workspace. Superior Essex is hiring for multiple positions in production and maintenance. Earn up to $23 an hour plus a sign-on bonus up to $5,000 and a competitive benefits package including Blue Cross Blue Shield, Delta Dental 401k with company match, vacation, and holiday pay. Apply at any Kansas works office or at superioressex.com. Hey, hunters, do you have everything you need for the fall hunting season? If not, then head to PNS Security for the shells, cases, decoys, and everything else you'll need. If it's time to upgrade to a new rifle, shotgun, or bow, PNS has it. And they sell hunting licenses and stamps. PNS has a good selection of gun safes, too. So head out west to PNS, a division of PNS Electric, one half mile west of 10th and Patton Road, Great Bend. He's a veteran of high school and college sports coverage in Kansas. Sports Day presents the Great Bend Tribune's Jim Mizunas. All right, Jimbo, tell me about this call at the goal line. We, well, picking on my my colleagues. Well, there's there's a there's a clear difference in my opinion. Now, if the the referees are sometimes on speakerphone, now if they had said. It was an inadvertent whistle. I could have bought that, and so could Great Ben. But when you say forward progress is stopped, now I wasn't down in the field. I didn't hear when the whistle blew. But everybody and their dogs in the end zone, to me, that's a touchdown. I mean, I don't know where forward progress starts or stops, but I do know when the guy goes on, you know, he, he came on the speakerphone, if he had said that there was an inadvertent whistle, I could have bought that. But when you say forward progress is stopped, well, everybody and their dogs in the end zone, so how is that not a touchdown? Well, if it inadvertent whistle, then they'd have to run the play over. No, no, they could just stop the. In other words, the whistle blows, the play's over. Right. Okay. But right. That would... And that would be an inadvertent whistle, in my opinion, because it was a touchdown. So I could buy that. Well, they, um, okay. Okay. So anyway, it you know it, it was a close, tight call. Great Ben lost the whack title on a similar play like that, where they it went, went down to overtime and. It, uh, Murray, that was a Garden City play. Yeah, it was a great. It was a, that was. One of the finest high school games I've ever seen. I will tell you something that that uh, boy, those calls on the goal line. You don't have replay. It's if you ever see an umpire put up his arms, that's not right because he doesn't have the sidelines. But did did they bust down on the wings and come running in or? Yeah, you know, it's just one of those uh, where again, I, I agree a hundred percent when you go from the line of scrimmage with your quarterback. Tom Brady's made that what ninety nine point nine percent of the times, 
It's always much better. I see these teams run shotgun time after time. On the go line. Yeah, it's no. just absolutely insane. Let's have our tailback runs five to seven yards with the quarterback <laughs> taking the snap. And he, you're delaying the count. So I've never agreed with that. And there were several NFL games where, where again, they went from the line of scrimmage and scored. So I agree 100% with not running shotgun in those situations because it just doesn't make any sense to me. Panthers four and two, much better than what you expected this year. The I was surprised Bueller had fallen off a little bit, but no, I wasn't surprised by now. You some, know, yeah, some of the scores you look yeah, at the I mean, scores right now are looking know, pretty good. Dodge City was an incredible comeback, and uh, maybe uh, I don't remember the last time they were fourteen points down heading to the fourth quarter, but that was an incredible comeback. And then Liberal was was up for grabs too, so they've won. Two really good competitive whack games, which sets them up nicely for the end of the stretch. But, yeah, they're moved up to uh, number nine, I think it was, number eight or number nine. And if they win another one, they'll probably move up another couple spots. And uh, going out to Garden City, they've they've actually done pretty well at Garden City and against Garden City. So I give them a, give them a decent shot in that game. It's unfortunate that uh, Deion Jones got injured because he had had a tremendous season. Uh, Matthew Mater and him were playing tremendous defense Friday night, and it was unfortunate when that kind of thing can happen. It's it's really the worst part of sports is when you see an athlete in their prime of their game or the prime of their high school career have an injury like that. It's, it's awfully tough. Well, it's uh, so the Panthers taking on Ulysses. <clears throat> One game in a whack this week, and I know that uh, – you remember the hatchet games between Dodge oh, yeah. City and Garden yeah, in, City when it, it would be, week. yeah, it just doesn't have the pizzazz it did twenty years ago, right? When they when Meadows was out oh, there, and, yeah, and, they had some incredible games, yeah, because Garden City was a doormat like Hutch High, and then all of a sudden you get the right coach in, and Dave Meadows turned it around just like the Hutchinson High coach Randy Dryling did, and uh, when you build momentum during football season, it sets up your whole school year, yeah. no question about it. It does. So, yeah, they're playing it in, in Wichita. Yeah, so. that'll, be, that'll be an interesting uh, See how venue. many people they get. Yeah. People are going to stream that. They're going to run, run each other off the road on the way coming into, into Wichita, one of the Garden City and Dodge City fans. Yeah, a couple of high school notes. Maxville shockingly beat lacrosse 50-0, to zero, so they pretty much took, it, took charge of that district in eight-man one, district seven. They've already beaten the top two teams next to them, so they've – Pretty much got that district clinched. They'll be the top seed coming out of that district. And then Hoisington, same way. They took care of Lakin, which was the only undefeated team, and they've got pretty much charge of uh, that district too. Although Larned has really played very, very well despite some injuries. Came back and won 60-6 to against Southwestern Heights. So, um, you know, Tad Remy does a very nice job down there and has got a competitive program. It's a rivalry type of game where you – you wonder, well, maybe Larned can – if Larned hangs tough, it'll be a ball game to the end. But uh, Hoisington has played very, very well this last week. Uh, and just like Patrick Burnett said, it's so interesting to see uh, week by week these high school teams, the St. John Tigers, they've won an average of one game the past 10 years. But they almost beat South Barber. I watched the tape of that game, 36-30, to 30, and – they had an incredible play. Uh, South Barber was ready to go up three touchdowns, but a lineman by the name of Abelardo Lanis picked up a fumble and went 65 yards the other way. So it was a 14-point swing or 16-point swing, whatever it ended up being. Because St. John, uh, St. South Barber was ready to go up three touchdowns. All of a sudden, it's a one-score game, and it stayed that way the whole game. So credit to uh, St. John coach Justin Nusser and his his guys down there, that was a tremendous game by St. John. Really the best game they've played in years. And really, the, <clears throat> I guess not the success, the lack of success that we've seen from St. John hasn't had anything to do with the athletes they have in school. It's getting those good athletes to come out for football and participate in all the sports, not just concentrate on one. You know? Yeah, we've seen that at McPherson. They started to get their really good athletes out as football wide receivers uh, several years ago. And it's really benefited them. They made the semifinals four or five times in, in Class 4A and have a competitive program again this year. But you're right. It's it's one of those things where if you get your good athletes out for football, you're going to definitely be a better a better football team. Yeah, St. John has had tremendous success under Coach Delp in cross country. So a lot of their athletes have just run cross country, which, again, hey, I'm fine with that. Do something. 
you know, run cross country, play football, just do something in, you know, whenever you can, because you only go through high school that, that, uh, those four years. So it's really put a lot of, because it used to be all you had was football, basketball, and track. Yeah. And there's now, quite so a few, really small schools trying to add baseball. Yeah, and, there's and a lot of spring sports now. And, and, you know, the fall sports, it's just really. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it, it can be tough in the small That sports. South Barber team, I saw them play in week two, and I was talking a little bit with Mitch Angleton. He's going to be on the program tomorrow. Uh, you have one injury in high school football, in eight-man. That can be a huge, and a, and a running back, linebacker, one of their better players uh, gets hurt. But, you know, South Barber has a bit of this Impressive. So, I mean, Stafford's looking right at it. Big opportunity to go to 7-0 and on Friday night. Yeah, and Stafford's a school that's won one playoff game in school history in 50 years or whatever, how long the playoffs been going. So that's a tremendous opportunity to win that district and, and get, get a great shot of playing a fourth-place team from another district. So, yeah, Stafford's really put – Stafford and Maxville – Put together a tremendous season so far. Yeah, there's been and you look at Ellsworth undefeated. That's oh, really cool. I just cool. can't believe Ellsworth. Russell's having a great year. They they faced it. They've a, played tough every a, a week. Very tough schedule. Yeah, very, yeah. Russell's probably played the toughest schedule of any team I've seen because they've played all those tough teams in their league and their district is very good. And too. you got Maxville undefeated and yeah. Ellenwood's competing. That's, Ellenwood's much much better. Again, they they haven't had. Yeah, you know, they've won a couple games and they've been competitive. So. They just had really their defense has played pretty well. They just had lack of production on offense. Want to touch on uh, state tennis will be coming up, and the teams that have qualified are Central Plains and Larned. Both teams will head to Topeka this week. Uh, Kyla Metro from Central Plains is a four-time state qualifier. When she teamed with her teammate in doubles, uh, they finished third and fifth, and then she's unable to play the last two years because of an injury. But uh, her only loss is uh, to Smoky Valley's Lena Rockholst. And then uh, Abigail Holt and Ellen McNett from Larned are on the singles side. And the uh, sisters, Brianna Hemkin and Ariana Hemkin, beat their teammates to qualify for the state tournament. So Larned has a doubles entry, too. So good luck and good success for those teams up in Topeka. Of course, collegiate perennial <laughs> state champ. Here's how tough they are. Is their defending state champion in singles got second in the regional? To their to teammate. their teammate, yeah. yeah. So yeah, one two, and of course they've got top ranked doubles teams too. So Dave Holly's only in five Hall of Fames from Wichita Collegiate. They've won thirty two team titles. So you can death taxes in Wichita Collegiate winning girls tennis. I think you can pretty much count on that one this week. You're not you're not calling for an upset there. No, no, no upset. No, no. Biblical upset there, but Smoky Valley, you know, Central Plains and Larned, they'll score some points. So we'll see uh, how they end up in the team race. And uh, obviously, Kyla Metro, depending on her draw or when she sees a collegiate player, certainly has a shot to make the semifinals, perhaps. We'll just see how that draw works. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of fall sports getting into their postseasons now. So, and yeah, regional golf lesson. is today. <clears throat> big uh, 3A golf tournament is uh, over at Larned Country Club and Hoisington Girls. Uh, perennial state qualifier under Bruce Cooper. Bruce Cooper is one of those coaches that you see him every year, and he's done just such a tremendous job at Hoisington for a number of years coaching boys and girls golf, and they'll certainly qualify as a team. And then Larned's got a good shot to get some qualifiers to the state tournament also, which will be at Hutchinson's Cary Park, okay. which I just played uh, Friday. So How'd you do? Tested, well, had a few good shots. <laughs> you were here shot. We're not going to get the. But I have a yellow golf ball, so I can find it. Oh no, you're not oh, a yeah, yellow no, guy. I got, really? I, yeah, I got a yellow golf ball. I got a At least you don't use the orange, Jim. No, no orange. It's not a range ball. It didn't have a stripe around it. No, it, it okay? it's, it's got, <laughs> actually, I got some logo balls that have my name on it. I said, oh, I'm going to get some logo balls. You are the you, you, yeah. you and your you, you got your logo fashions and everything yeah. else, man. It's the one and only Jim Mazunas in here on Sports Day. Jimbo, thanks. We'll talk to you next Monday. You're welcome, sir. Okay, Jim Mazunas here with us on Sports Day. Coming up, Chewy Loera talking some great Bend High School soccer. With Mike Corson, it's On the Prowl with the big guy next. From the Mayo Money Management Studios, 1590 KVGB, Gray Band, and 95.5 FM, K238CK, Hoisington.
If you need physical therapy, consider Advanced Therapy in Great Bend and Progressive Therapy in Larned and Hayes. I had a young gal come in the other day who has been having chronic back pain. Did a session just helping her to understand her pain, not understanding her back, but teaching her how her nervous system works. And just that knowledge just calmed her down so much. She came back in this morning, huge smile on her face, and she was so excited to learn more. It was a blast. Call Advanced or Progressive Therapy and Sports Medicine to explore your treatment options and get your life back. If you're not filling with Cenex Premium Diesel, then you're not giving your fuel system the premium treatment. Cenex Roadmaster XL comes with a more complete additive package for a more complete burn, while restoring your power by up to 4.5% and your fuel economy by up to 5%. Typical number two diesel? I guess it covers the basics. Cenex Premium Diesel diesel that doesn't mess around. Contact American Plains Co-op in Great Bend, your certified Cenex distributor today. One thing that shouldn't be scary this October is turning on your heater. Carbon monoxide is a silent killer and can be released through the tiny cracks in your furnace. Before turning on your heater this winter, have the pros at Comfort Pro inspect your unit to ensure it's safe for your family and will keep you warm all winter long. Comfort Pro, the area's largest Bryant dealer. Bryant. Whatever it takes from Comfort Pro. Your problem is no problem for Comfort Pro. Warren Brothers Incorporated would like to thank all their loyal customers. They can repair and coat your oil field production equipment or sandblast and paint your rolling stock. Warren Brothers offers statewide service with their portable units. Next time you have a project, don't hesitate to call Warren Brothers, where they're always having a blast. 506 Highway 281 Grape Inn. Call 620-793-3630. That's 620-793-3630. Sports Day presents On the Prowl with Mike Corson, an inside look at all the sports taking place at Great Bend High School. Welcome back to Sports Day, 1590 KVGB, 95.5 FM. Mike Corson joined once again by Great Bend High School varsity soccer coach Chewy Luera. How's it going, coach? Doing good. How about yourself? Pretty good for a Monday. Busy. As I said this morning on the radio, now with all these good football games, the weekends are just getting shorter and shorter. you got to watch football all day. Yeah, you're into watching the games. All of a sudden, you're going. You're starting off at noon and it's almost time. It's, it's it's dinner time by the time you watch a few games. Well, let's go back to Thursday for you guys. First meeting with Garden City was 10 nothing. Garden City, Dodge City, very good teams in the Western Athletic Conference. 3 nothing this time, so it, it's a loss, but it's a moral victory. Yeah, just like you said, very good teams in the Western Athletic Conference, and you know they're they're a fantastic group over there. They've they've done a lot of improving themselves and selves, and um, you know they're they're giving a lot of trouble to some of the opponents they're seeing and. Yeah, we get to see them, or we got to see them, what was it, Thursday? And, uh, yeah, 10-0 the first time, 3-0 the second time. So just like we just like we knew that hey, even if we didn't win, we were going to be better prepared than we were. And, yeah, we put up a put up a better fight this time. Can you pinpoint what it was? I think just, um, yeah, just like the quick turnaround. Again, like we mentioned a couple weeks back, you know, you, you play a team once and you understand how, what their tendencies are, what they like to do. And um, we, we – um, we've been focusing more on uh, skill and just trying to figure out the basics, but we did look into tactics a little bit. It's like, hey, all right, what are these guys' tendencies when he, when a certain player that you're defending receives the ball? What's his favorite target? What's uh, what's he do? Does he like to beat you with speed, or does he look for uh, uh, a pass to kind of help him um, beat beat that pressure? So we were just trying to figure out what their tendencies were and take that away from them, and a little better prepared this time. And one of the things I've come out and watched you a couple times. And you watch it on TV too. They track possession time. It seemed like Garden City, Hayes, and then you guys against Word of Life. Time of possession usually yields better things on the scoreboard. How does a coach go about, even if you don't score, just holding the ball more? Yeah, especially um, especially as the game goes on, you want possession. The more you have possession, the more the ball moves, and your players don't have to shift over as much. And um, when you don't have the ball, that's when you find your guys, or excuse me, when you find your players chasing and sprinting into a defensive position and that's where they're going to exert more energy and yeah when you have the ball it's going to it's going to help you not make those recovery runs and um, be able to hold some of that energy towards the the dying minutes of the game great Bend high school coach chewy loera 
Another tough one tomorrow. Dodge City was also a 10 nothing score. They're the reigning 6A champions. Approach that one the same way you did the rematch with Dodd or Garden. Yeah, yeah pretty pretty similar. Um, we know that they're going to be a tough team, and it goes. I mean, they've just got fa- uh, phenomenal depth over there. Um, they'll they'll sub you know six seven guys at a time, and by the time two or three rotations go by, you almost forget who the starter is. They've just got that much depth and quality to their players over there. They do they do they do an awesome job. And um, yeah, but it's going to be this pretty similar approach. We're just trying to figure out a little bit more of what they like to do and. Um, again, you know, we're just trying to stay competitive. Let's let's see if we can't keep this thing within a few goals and score a few goals of our own, and um, you know, pick up some momentum and maybe a little little mor- morale pick up to, to going into the last few games of the season. And then when I was out in Dodge City for the football game, whatever it was, a couple of weeks now, you see all the little kids wearing soccer gear. How are, how important? I mean, they lost a lot of kids. They were the six A champs. I thought they might be down this year, but you see it now from the ground up that kids are really interested in the soccer program how close is great bend yeah we're starting to pick up and develop more of our youth our youth development here is it's, it's a huge focus of ours because we know that's where it starts i mean you can't to build something you can't build from the top down you got to build from from the bottom up and so we understand that we've got to put our our club teams or our youth teams um together you know whether it's um at, at starting at nine years old or whatever it may be um, but yeah, it's 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 huge. It's a crucial part of the uh, development and how how much your team's going to succeed when they're in the high school level. If they are playing for the first time in high school, you're not going to maybe compete as well as a team that's boys playing since um, you know they're in third grade. Panthers travel to Dodge City tomorrow for varsity and JV action. Hayes Wednesday for just JV, and then you guys are back home Thursday for varsity and JV for the home closers. Yeah, that'll be against Junction City on Thursday, and that'll be the last home game of the season. And then the following week, I believe Monday, we'll go to Liberal. And then Thursday, we'll go to McPherson to wrap up the the regular season. And then from there, depending on where we set out on the standings, we'll figure out or, or we'll find out where the our first round of regionals will be. All right. Chewy, go make some noise in Dodge City. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. More sports day after this. This is Barton Community College Athletic Director Trevor Rolfs. Barton Athletic Department is proud to sponsor Sports Day on KBG, a show that showcases all of our high school student-athletes in Central Kansas, some who will continue their educational and athletic future with us here at Barton. We're excited about the fall sports season that is now underway and invite you to attend a game or a match and experience the rich tradition of Cougar Athletics. For complete schedules and results, visit BartonSports.com. Get the latest 5G devices at Next Tech Wireless. Now you can get the iPhone 14 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus on us or up to $999 off any other device. And that's not all. You can also get half off a new Apple Watch when you bring your number to us. Next Tech Wireless. We are Kansas. The high-rise apartment renovation is nearly complete. These newly remodeled units are close to lots of downtown amenities. And you can't beat the views. Rent is based on your income with all utilities included. Apply now to get your paperwork done before move-in to get first dibs on apartments. Learn more or apply at GBHAKS.com. Great Bend Housing Authority. Equal housing opportunity. Great Bend Appliance Furniture and Sleep Source, your Whirlpool dealer, is celebrating 24 years of free delivery and service after the sale. Here's Dale Pruder. We try our best. We do have two service people. We try to take care of you after the sale. And you continue to get new products in all the time. We just keep after it. We have financing, 12 months, same as cash every day on $4.99 and above. If you need it, they probably have it at Great Bend Appliance Furniture and Sleep Source, your Whirlpool dealer at 10th and Morton. Sports Day is presented by Barton Community College and the Cougar Athletic Department. Sports Day on 1590 KVGB and 95.5 FM. Welcome back. Sports Day here on 1590 KVGB, 95.5 FM. Steve Webster in with Dr. Doom. You know that... uh, (laughs) That's me. (laughs) 
Raiders Jim, by at least six tonight. Well, the, well Jim Azunas was <laughs> looking at the records up there, and he said, yeah, that guy that picked him to lose seven, he's in a lot of trouble right now. This is one that you need tonight. There is a long season. We got the Bills next week, so, you know, that could be number two. Maybe number three if could it's be according three, to yours. Could be three, on the Raiders. It's a long season. Ah, the Raiders. The Raiders. See, I don't – it's – it's not like it used to be because then it went, the Chiefs were bad for so long and then the Raiders were good and then the Chiefs got, the Raiders stayed bad. The Chiefs were okay and then. It's so, not like when Ben Davidson speared Lenny Dawson back in the late no. 60s. <laughs> and Otis Taylor came over and jumped on <laughs> That's him. Right. Oh, the good old days. Oh, yeah. George Bland. Did you ever see the picture of him? Morris Stroud trying to block the field goal <laughs> at 6'10". <laughs> Yeah, that's the only good thing he could do is knock things out of the air because Morris Stroud could not catch a <laughs> pass to save, save his That's right. You have some information here. We have some. I put on my. Cease op- and desist. I had to put on my operations manager's hat. We got an email from the Chiefs, and they basically told us we cannot stream the Chiefs on 104.3 website anymore. Okay. So that one is off. Uh, so you'll have to listen to it on 104.3 The Point. And also KU. We decided not to stream KU because we think they're in the same boat. So we did not stream the KU game on Saturday. Obviously, they're still on the radio, but they are not on the streaming. And also, as far as Sports Day live streaming, we have no idea what is going on. We can record it. It's we have, We're having some audio difficulties. So You're the TV guy, Mike. It's, we I, brought you over here because your TV expertise. Well, Dakota, I think it's, well, I got Dakota trading post intro that we'll talk about one day with Dakota, but uh, I think it's a jack causing us audio problems. Well, you're jack of all trades when you're in. You're, but see, this is streaming is a little bit different. Karina has been more helpful in this than I have been. Your operations manager. <laughs> well, operations manager has some limits. Okay. Thank you for allowing me to do that. You're the operations manager. You'll you'll suspend me for another week. I'll just, <laughs> just would you would you please? You'll sit on the porch again, yeah, won't you? Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. There's nothing to do now. There's not any fantasy baseball. <laughs> I right? I guess watch. We can watch real baseball. Uh, yeah, that'd be all right. That's and we'll on. have it tomorrow. Uh, a couple games for you. They're going to play four. We'll have the American League games. They fit in our broadcast window a little bit better. Astros and Mariners. Coverage starting at 2, and that'll be followed up by the Yankees and the Cleveland Guardians. And then we'll have a couple National League matchups for you coming up on Wednesday. Back to the American League on Thursday. Here we go. Fun time of year for me. I just can't wait till next year when there's a pitch clock and there's illegal defense. You cannot. I'll return to baseball. There you go. Talk to you tomorrow. Sports Day on KBGB.